Hi, welcome to this week's GTA 5 o'clock. Here for you at 5 o'clock on a Wednesday, like it's supposed to be. Apologies again for last week's slight delay in getting it out, but we hope you thought it was worth it. Uh, I'm Tim Weaver. I'm here with Dan Dawkins. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, very good, thanks. Um, Dan, you need to tell us about our brand new GTA 5 o'clock Twitter feed. Uh, yeah, um, if you want to follow us and keep up to date with the show, uh, get the latest links, videos, and maybe the odd Q&A with us, Follow at GTA 5 o'clock or GTA V o'clock. That should be up on the screen as we talk. Got about 200 people up there already. Thanks for everyone who's joined. The community's been really great. So, yeah, get in touch. Okay, so this week we're going to, uh, as the title of this video suggests, look at 15 things you haven't spotted or didn't know existed in the existing trailers of GTA 5 uh, and by that we, we know that people have been into the trailers us included and uh, picked out all sorts of uh, details and uh, ideas of how missions work and that kind of stuff but we reckon we spotted 15 things which we haven't seen anywhere else and we're hoping we'll shed a bit of light on the game uh, Dan do you want to kick us off with this opening screenshot from the second trailer yes second trailer yes I want to get that Right, second trailer. Number one, <laughs> Frasier's Crane. It's not... <laughs> high bro joke for you there. Um, it's not Frasier's Crane. What a start. In, <laughs> if you look, we can see uh, the front of Michael's house, uh, which is all well and good, and obviously the obvious thing is the car to look at. But if you peek between the little gap in the skyline, between the sort of skyscraper and his home, you can see the edge of a construction tower. Mm. Now, if you look at the first trailer, this yellow tower with a little grey protrusion seems to be visible when you first glimpse the sort of uh, the for sale sign and the yep. construction tower, and then possibly again from a distance when you first introduced to Michael and he turns around, um, and you can see in the background again a very similar shaped construction thing. That's it. I guess it gives an, us an idea, though, of the sort of more of an idea of the layout of the city and how um, how things might sort of sit around. You know how how his house is close to certain um, landmarks and that kind of thing, um, and how and we'll talk later on in one of the screenshots about how they really have compressed that geography so much for this game. Um, and so although it's a much more sprawling experience than GTA 4 and Liberty City, um, they still compress the actual LA metro area in order to make it a much more navigable city. Screenshot 2, Dan. Uh, Michael throwing a leaf away, but that's not what you're going to talk about. No. Uh, I was going to make a joke about something to do with clovers. I couldn't think of one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a missed Clovers opportunity, actually. Clover, field, clover. Three-leaf clover. Well, three-leaf clover is my link. This is a purely throwaway observation. But uh, when Michael is, you know, waddling out to the poolside, yeah. um, he picks up a leaf, and it is a three-leaf clover, or on the shape of a three-leaf clover. Three-leaf clover, as we all know, is the defining mission in GTA 4, which is the mission which kind of pays a heavy tribute to Heat, the heist movie. Yep. And um, Three Leaf Clover was cited as one of the influential factors in the direction of GTA V, because obviously the game's all about heists. Mm. And that you know that bank job you do in Three Leaf Clover was one of the defining and most difficult scenes in GTA IV. So whether this is a completely throwaway observation or a sort of nice metaphorical nod, I thought it was worth picking up. Yeah, definitely. Screenshot three. Um, we talked a lot, Dan, before we came on air here about um, about renting houses, and uh, you can't do that. I think I'm right in saying in GTA Five. Uh, we don't know about renting houses, but what's clear is there's no property buying system in GTA Five, which people had, you know, come to like in the previous games. Uh, that's gone for whatever reason. Rockstar do say there is a like a vibrant and fun economy, and there's lots of ways to spend money, but buying properties won't be one of them. One thing we did spot though was um, in this screenshot as well as in an, an another screenshot, I think from the uh, in a moment from the first trailer, where Michael's zipping down a street in a in a high end sports car, I think away from the police, uh, we we glimpsed a, a property for rent, a apartment for rent, and the number, the telephone numbers you spotted this down on both are the same. 
Yeah, they look to be the same. You can make out the digits 555 and certainly the sort of zero one bit on the other shot, which we should hopefully show you as, as we're talking now. Mm. Um, so I guess, you know, maybe there's a central place where you, uh, you ring up for things. And, you know, maybe in real life, if you ring that number, well, maybe nothing happens. Maybe something happens. Maybe you get a big phone bill, but it might mm. be worth someone checking out, certainly if you live in the States. Okay. Screenshot four. Uh, Michael and his son having a chat. Uh, we spotted some a few things here actually. Dan, do you want to pick up on the son first of all? Yeah, I think well that's obviously Michael's son, and he says, "Hey, you know, let's bounce. We're bouncing now, etc." Um, what I, don't, I haven't seen talked about much is the fact he's got this big neck tattoo, uh, which seems to read to me like it says "entitled." Now, unless that's my eyes playing up, mm, but no, again, it does look like it. Yeah, that would be quite a fun classic rock star satirical thing because you've obviously got the sort of privileged gangster wannabe son of a very rich, comfortable man. Um, and it's I guess it's Rockstar's comment on a sort of entitlement, delusional uh, generation. You know, mm. they've kind of had it a bit too easy. Yeah. They look to be, um, just looking around in the background here, uh, they look to be in what the game's, the game's equivalent of Beverly Hills is by the sort of high-end look of this, the stores there, I'd suggest. we In the background, you can see the names of the stores I think that says Nutsacky on the left <laughs> of course it does yes. and on the, on the right is Uniform and you pointed out Dan that um, as the camera sort of tilts round slightly to uh, the right in this scene you can see that it's got like um, it looks like the doors are open and, and, and we were sort of wondering aloud whether you could wander around stores in a and a select, you know, clothes maybe. And buy. yeah, it looks like a location you can enter. Quite often in GTA, you can tell the sort of false buildings because that you know they're, they're more like textures, the fronts of the windows. But this does look like quite possibly like you could go inside. Mm. Number six, I think I've already lost count. Anyway, the next one, uh, done. A uh, very simple thing again, but Trevor's stoving some man's head in. Um, but he stood in front of a very rusty and faded sign, which if you take a little bit of reading, seems to say recreation front or recre recreation front beach area? Well, I think what we concluded was that um, it suggested it was right on the right on the water because as we know, and Rockstar have already confirmed, Trevor's from this kind of in-game equivalent of Salton Sea, which is kind of like this sort of down Slightly in real life, slightly downtrodden kind of area, but at the same time, it's built. You know, all the communities around there are built around this massive expanse of water, and um, this sort of rusted kind of sign suggests a sort of maybe a more glorious past at some stage where people used to kind of come and holiday there, but now perhaps has it's been it's been left to kind of rot, and that is again perhaps a uh, comment by Rockstar on the. The nature of you know the the, the econ economic times that we're in and how yeah. you know different areas have suffered in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the next one um, is is that Franklin or is that just some guy? I can't see from this angle. Uh, I don't think it's Franklin. I, I we haven't got it running right okay. now, so I wouldn't want to say for definite. But in the background, you spotted. Yeah, just very tiny. Uh, you can see there's a broken sign in the top left with a letter missing which very clearly says rail yard. Mm. Um, you can see also the end letter, which is K, so something that ends with K in something rail yard. I wonder if it might be a uh, dock rail yard. And the reason I say that is because in the background you can see that bridge. And I think in one of the previous episodes of, of this show, that bridge, and the name escapes me now, is down in the game's equivalent of the docks. Ah. So um, I reckon just out of sight here, You'll find cranes, and you'll find a harbour area, and you'll find boats. Frasier's crane? It could be Frasier's crane. Again, like the first screenshot, it could be Frasier's crane. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Uh, the three guys talking. Uh, Dan, you spotted uh, some bits and bobs in the background. Uh, yeah, a really tiny, obscure spot again, but in the very top right, just on the horizon, you can see the edge of one of the oil extraction pumps. Mm which we glimpse at the end of the first trailer, uh, sort of on the, not like sort of a cliffside overlooking the city and it's sunset and it's all very pretty. Uh, and that's a Brute pump, it's called Brute. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, that. I think we talked about that oil area 
in one of the other episodes, and I think it's an actual, as you'd expect, an actual, um, actual oil oil drilling uh, oil drilling well in the real in the real Los Angeles. So, uh, so yeah, whether there's one of them, whether there's a couple of them, I don't know. But I do know that around that area in 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 real real LA is a kind of like it's quite dusty and. Um, you know, like uh, quite uh, sort of not a lot of houses around there, and that's sort of on the le on the left hand side here, underneath the helicopter. You can see that it is quite dusty, and that suggests that they and shows again how how much Rockstar have paid attention to the real life topography of the city. One tiny thing as well, I think there's eight rockets in the rocket dispensing tray. Uh, whether the actual in game will measure that amount of rockets, but um, yeah, I think it's eight. It's kind of a tiny point. Okay, the next one um, we talked about a little bit in the office before we came down, and um, and I picked it out while I was looking through the trailer this morning. But I, I became unconvinced as to whether it really warranted talking about. It. But then, Dan, you raised an, uh, an interesting point. Maybe maybe you you want to talk about this? Yeah. Well, we were first of all we were talking about the the enormous satellite dish that looked a little bit suspicious. Mm. Um, which led me to think about the original leaked casting call for the game uh, and in which they talked about uh, two brothers, the De Silva twins, uh, and one of them exactly fitted the profile of Michael, who's even yep. a sort of 40-something guy with kids who'd been there and tried to retire, uh, and another guy, who, um, like Simon De Silva, who was described as kind of crazy and unhinged and he lived out in the sticks. Now, he sounds like an absolute dead ringer for Trevor, yeah. as, as we know him now. Yeah, yeah. Now, Trevor is also referenced in another casting call for, from a character called Nervous Jerry, who's like described as a paranoiac who lives out in the sticks and he's terrified of um, Simon De Silva, you know, who we might know as Trevor. Mm. Now, I just wondered, and I've actually, I'll, I'll probably explain why this isn't quite the case in a minute, but I wonder because of that enormous satellite dish, was he a guy who's kind of like monitoring... Uh, transmissions and wavelengths because mm. he's some sort of conspiracy nut. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you actually see this footage running, the guy who turns around doesn't look much like a nervous Jerry. No. And uh, in fact, you know, Trevor's saying to him, I control the guns and the crank in this area. So yeah. it sounds like he's hustling down like another dealer or something like that. Yeah. But I, I do think it's interesting to think about the context of that casting call and certainly the, you know, the way they portrayed Michael and Trevor in them. Yeah. Okay. Next one is um, I think we talked about a little bit about uh, it earlier, but again, you can see uh, the for rent sign just above Michael's head on the right hand side here. Does uh, it say Wolf's? I think it does say Wolf's. Yeah. Um, and again, that number underneath is the same number that Dan pointed out on the previous for rent sign. Um, which you know may mean nothing, or it may mean, as you said, you've just got a vibrant in-game economy. You know, we know there's going to be an iFruit phone. We know you're probably going to be able to, uh, well, you are going to be able to get on the internet. I just wonder whether that number may come in, may play more of a part than than perhaps we think it will. I mean, obviously, you, you're not necessarily, as we suggested, kind of um, building up a property portfolio. But maybe you know, maybe you're renting. Um, places in order to scope out potential heists. You know, it could be that. May, I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm thinking aloud here. But yeah, no, I. I don't know. Um, I. I don't think Rockstar are going to turn you into a buy to let speculator. No, um, that would be ridiculous. But it's so, in, it's just interesting that both those places have got exactly the same number. Yeah. Now, like, no, maybe it's just because they only applied one number to all the, mm. all the different things, or maybe it's something more. Yeah, apply the number texture. Yeah. Uh, so this next one, uh, outside a club, I think, Dan, you said was called Enema. Uh, I think the club's called Tequila La. Right. And if you look, there's a sign called, I think it says Enema above, which is, for I think, for a clothing brand. And on the left is what looks like an advert for Piss Fasser. Yeah. Which, as we know, is like, you know, the GTA beer. Yeah. Um, Enema, strangely enough, was... Meant, you know, and again, we we covered this in an earlier episode uh, when we talked specifically about the big leaks that have gone on about GTA Five so far, and we debunked some of the findings in them. Um, Enema was mentioned in one of those leaks, and I think you know, seeing when I first saw this trailer and I saw the word Enema and I saw it linked to this, it seemed like oh, that's a clue. But in that uh, leak, they said Enema was the name of the club, right? 
but it doesn't appear to be given that the sign tequila la is over the actual door and on the sort of you know yeah uh, what do you call it um, umbrella thing yeah. outside so i think animus is just a clothing brand what was interesting, I thought, in this a screenshot, uh, aside from that, was that uh, you can see the bike on the right-hand side here, and it's the bike that uh, Franklin is pictured with, I think, or the t certainly the type of bike that Franklin was pictured with in one of the other um, screenshots. So it could be that uh, Franklin is is the person on this bike. It might not be, it might not be, but but in the trailer, when you watch it, the uh, music kind of fades out a little bit, and the, the, the bike kind of revs a little bit, and that suggests that he sort of whoever this is is kind of watching what's happening yeah. now it might be nothing or it might be an indication as to a mission it might be this guy's I'm, I'm i'm you know pushing the boat out here but it might be this guy's been chucked out of the club and you're you you're kind of waiting outside for him uh, yeah i don't think it's insignificant that he's in the foreground of the scene and they fade up the music i think yeah. they're obviously trying to draw your attention to the bike um and as we know you know franklin's kind of your bike man yeah so that seems to make a lot of sense Okay, next screenshot is uh, we're back at Michael's house, but what I thought was interesting about this is, and I don't really know that many people have actually looked at it from this point of view, is that this gives you a really, really clear view of where Michael lives. Um, you can see um, the swimming pool uh, sort of uh, uh, above the the tennis court there uh, is the swimming pool that Michael walks past as he goes to the sun lounger at the beginning of the second trailer. Um, now the the sun lounge. I think in the other in the previous in the beginning of the second trailer, the sun lounges look a little bit uh, more yellow than than they do there. But it could be because it's the you know they're in sh they're in shadow. But that's definitely where he emerges from. And we've seen the front of the house as well, where his equivalent of an Audi is parked outside. But we've never really sort of seen it from from this angle. And and I must confess, when I've sort of looked at it in. In the past, I've just sort of seen people playing tennis and not really made that connection. Yeah, I mean, it does, you can sort of put yourself into the eye of the picture and imagine that in the like uh, third person, you can see yourself running down those steps past the mini fountain down to the tennis court. We can only presume it activates a mini game. So, yeah. I guess you know you, you're getting out of your house straight with the possibility of a tennis mini game. Um, something else to look at is on the very far bottom left of the frame, you can see a dude like cleaning up the. Using like what looks like um like a what you call it a garden Hoover yeah to clean up leaves. And I'm not sure that's the technical name for it. Yeah, <laughs> is it not? No, <laughs> I'm not sure. I've just, I've, I've, just, I've, just thought, I've just ordered one on Amazon. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to get. Garden Hoover, I like it. <laughs> garden Hoover, uh, whatever they're called. And um, we talked about previously uh, there being like a sort of persistent day night cycle, and people in the world having places to be at certain times. And we talked about how people like in the poorer areas outside of town would commute into the affluent areas and be seen doing menial tasks. Mm. Now, you know, again, whether the guy with the uh, garden hoover TM is doing <laughs> some garden hoovering and then he goes back to live like near the Salton Sea or something, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, next screenshot. Um, on the left, we can uh, glimpse the wind farm we've talked about in previous episodes, which is, of course, a, a real-life and vast wind farm uh, out in the sort of uh, sticks beyond, uh, beyond LA. On the right there, just under the sort of billboard, for, I think that says Fly US, uh, are some radars. Uh, Dan? Yeah, I just thought this, this little sequence we're about to show gives you an idea of how Rockstar are hinting at the scale and sort of the geography of the city. This seems to be you heading out on the freeway outside, outside of town, yeah. moving out towards sort of the sticks areas. Yeah. Uh, you can see the satellite dishes there, just in the sort of middle right of the frame on the horizon line. Mm. Now. If we skip a frame to the next scene, you can see the dudes brawling outside the liquor place with the piss faster sign. Now there, they're incredibly close to those satellite mm. dishes. Now if there are the same satellite dishes, it means that you know this sort of pokier area begins almost immediately mm. um, from there. And then there's another scene just afterwards, even further back but still with the satellite dishes in frame, where you get to see Trevor in that kind of, uh, how do you describe that car? Uh, buggy? buggy, June buggy, buggy. I don't know. Is it some kind of June Hoover? Uh, yeah, it could be a June Hoover. <laughs> it's certainly Hoovering up some sand there. Yeah, well, I think that's really conclusive. That's a June Hoover. Yeah. So uh, Trevor's in a June Hoover, but you can see again. It's the, the, what the shots are doing. It's moving you in a natural geography progression. 
you know, from facing the satellite dishes to going behind them to going even further away from them again. Yeah. Time to drop a fact bomb, Dan, fact about this. Up. That radar, those radars there are actually probably based on the NASA Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex out in the Mojave Desert. Ah. But here's an interesting point, and, I re- and, and earlier on I was talking about how they really compress the geography of the city. Okay, in the real life LA, the, the Goldstone Deep Space Communication Complex, try saying that quickly, is kind of like northeast of LA, and Salton Sea, which is where Trevor, you know, the, the area in the game Trevor's from, is kind of southeast. So they're actually quite a long way from one another in 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 the real world. Mm. But they've been, it looks like they've been really compressed together here because if we go back to the screenshot of the dudes brawling outside the liquor store, you can see that the radars are really um, really close to uh, some sort of some sort of town. It could be a very small town. But in real life, Gold, Goldstone is an actual is a ghost town. There's nothing there apart from these radars. This sort of Na- NASA research facility. So that's one area where Rockstar look to have kind of slightly slightly changed uh, a real world location. But if we go further back to the screenshot we started from, where the lorries kind of going down the mm. freeway, and we see the wind farm on the left and the radars on the right, they appear to be really right next to one another. Yeah. But in real life, they are miles apart. So ah. it's interesting how they've really compressed that geography. They've crunched it right up, which yeah. I, I think brings us to our final set of observations. Yeah. Um, this again is talking about the way that Rockstar put an object in one frame and then repeat it in another. Now, in I think this is from the first, no, second trailer, mm. we see this red aircraft flying over the canyon, uh, over the rail bridge, uh, and in the background. And this kind of looks kind of like a Mount Chiliad style area, you know, yeah. that kind of vibe. Now, if you look in the background, there's a train with like a yellow slash front pulling a grey carriage Yeah. now later on in trailer 2 we see Trevor on top of a yellow sort of fronted train with a grey back and a little circle logo and a grey thing being pulled behind it going head first into another train emerging from the tunnel that we can see in the other moment yeah now I, I I don't know whether it's just two snatches of the same bit of geography at different times or if like seconds after this plane shoots past uh, Trevor jumps out on the top of the thing and all it all cuts loose yeah but I think either way we are seeing that same bit of geography from two different angles it's, it's if nothing else I think it's given you an in, an insight into the the how the mission might work I mean imagine if if, like you say, that that plane flies over the train and Trevor gets dropped off, but is off off screen slightly here, and then seconds later the other train comes out of the tunnel opposite. You can see you're right. You can see how that kind of mission yeah. starts to sort of piece together. I mean, unless unless Trevor is like the Flash, I don't see how he's going to get out no. of the plane, climb the thing, and do all that before another train emerges from the the little. Uh, I was going to call it a peephole, but in fact it's a tunnel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People is something else. It's another one of my fabulous inventions. Yeah. Um, so, I, d- I just think you know maybe he's already on the train. Maybe they're not quite the same moments, but yeah. we're definitely seeing from different perspectives. You know that that same bit of location and geography. Okay, so that was 15 things you hadn't spotted in GTA 5's trailers. We hope you enjoyed them. If you've got any other things that you've seen in the trailers that we haven't brought up and you think are quite interesting, whack them in the comments and we'll definitely take a look at them and mention them next time we're on. Dan, do you want to mention our Twitter feed again? Uh, Yeah, just a brief mention to follow us on at GTA V O'Clock. It will, in fact, link into next week's episode because we're going to be asking for some of your suggestions and ideas I won't give it away now, but do follow us and I'll give out some clues there. Okay, thanks for listening and uh, please subscribe to this, uh, to GTA 5 O'Clock. We work pretty hard on this and I know sometimes you have to bear with us as we come in a little late, but it's only because we're trying to analyse these trailers and analyse these screenshots and provide something new and exciting every week and sometimes that takes a little longer than we'd like. But we hope you're enjoying them. Please put your comments down below, otherwise we'll see you next time.